Today's video is made possible by Brilliant.org. Today I've got this nice algebra type problem that comes from a math Olympiad in Austria from 1983. So by looking at the demographics of the channel, I'd wager that most of you have not yet been born in 1983. Maybe post in the comments, if you're comfortable of course, which side of 1983 your birth lies on. Okay, so let's look at our problem. We'd like to find all real numbers A so that the roots alpha, beta, gamma of the following cubic polynomial, x cubed minus 6x squared plus ax plus a equals zero, satisfy the following cubic equation in the roots. So alpha minus one quantity cubed plus beta minus one quantity cubed plus gamma minus one quantity cubed equals zero. So our goal here will be to form some sort of like large enough system of equations for alpha, beta, and gamma using both this equation as well as this equation. And those systems of equations for alpha, beta, and gamma will necessarily involve A. And then we'll like play around with these equations until we can get a number value for A. Okay, so let's get to it. So first off, I'll take my cubic, so that's x cubed minus 6x squared plus ax plus a, and I'll factor it using the fact that we know the roots are alpha, beta, and gamma. So this factors as x minus alpha times x minus beta times x minus gamma. And it's not said here, but alpha, beta, and gamma can be complex roots if necessary. And in fact, for our final polynomial, they will necessarily be complex numbers. Okay, so now we'll multiply out this right-hand side and then compare coefficients. You could also do this very quickly with Vieta's formula, but let's do it from scratch. Okay, so multiplying this out will give us x cubed. So that's taking x times x times x. And then next we'll have minus the sum of alpha, beta, and gamma times x squared. That's from choosing two x's and one number as we multiply that out. And then next we'll have plus alpha, beta, plus beta, gamma, plus alpha, gamma times x. And then finally minus alpha, beta, gamma from the constant term. Okay, great. So now, like I said, we can equate coefficients. So we'll have minus six is equal to minus the sum of alpha, beta, gamma. And then we'll have a equals this sum of the quadratic terms. It's a nice symmetric sum of the quadratic terms. And then finally, a will also be equal to the negative product of the roots. Okay, so let's maybe write those down in a nice list that we can work off. So I'll color code that. So from this blue bit, we get alpha plus beta plus gamma equals six. And then let's see, from this orange underlined bit, we'll have alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma equals A. And then finally, from the green underlined bit, we'll have alpha times beta times gamma equals minus a. Okay, so that's looking good. We've got this nice system of three equations involving really four variables. Those four variables are alpha, beta, gamma, and a. But if we wanna solve for a in terms of a number, we need a little bit more information than this. Instead of having three equations and four unknowns, we need four equations and four unknowns. But in fact, we can get that fairly easily using again that alpha, beta, gamma are the roots of this polynomial. So that means if you plug alpha, beta, gamma into this polynomial, we should get zero. So let's write that down. We'll have alpha cubed minus six times alpha squared plus a times alpha plus a equals zero. And then similarly for beta and gamma. Okay, so that's looking nice. So now we've got three more equations. 
which is, like I said, more than enough where we could get numerical values for A, alpha, and gamma. Although all we'll really need is a numerical value for A. Okay, so looking at this first set of equations, we see that they're symmetric in alpha, beta, and gamma, whereas the second set of equations is not symmetric in alpha, beta, and gamma. Brilliant's visual, hands-on approach is a really effective and engaging way to master key concepts behind today's technology, which is critical to staying ahead. Brilliant supports your learning every step of the way, from starting you on the right path at a perfect skill level to letting you track your progress. Gradually, you can master whole topics in as little as 15 minutes a day and learn anywhere, anytime, on your phone, tablet, or computer. They have material for beginners all the way up to experts like me. Brilliant makes learning like a game, with fun features that let you challenge yourself and compete with others. Recently, I've been working with my son on a pre-algebra course. He's been really enjoying it, and it's been great for me to see these concepts click in his mind. I can see a lifelong love of learning developing in him already, and Brilliant is somewhat to thank for that. I highly encourage you to start your own learning journey today by going to brilliant.org slash Michael Penn to get a 30-day free trial, and the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Now we've got to start using this this second condition down here that this sum of alpha minus one cubed and so on and so forth equals zero. So let's maybe multiply these out and put them down here. So that'll give us something like this alpha cubed minus three alpha squared plus three alpha minus one, so that'll be my alpha minus one cubed term, and then plus beta cubed minus three beta squared plus three beta minus one, and then finally gamma cubed minus three gamma squared plus three gamma minus one, that's all equal to zero. And now I'll collect like terms, but not exactly like terms, just all of the cubics, all of the squares, and all of the linear terms. So we're collecting terms of the same degree. So that'll leave me with alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus gamma cubed, and then minus three alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared, and then plus three alpha plus beta plus gamma equals the number three. Just moving all of those minus ones to the other side of the equation. Now from here I'd like to simplify this a little bit. I'd like to get this down from a cubic to a quadratic. And I can do that by taking my second set of equations and solving for alpha cubed, beta cubed, and gamma cubed. So moving all of the squares, linear, and constant terms to the other side of the equation, we'll be left with something like this. We'll have alpha cubed equals six alpha squared minus a alpha minus a. Similarly, we'll have beta cubed equals six beta squared minus a times beta minus a. And same thing for gamma. Gamma cubed is six gamma squared minus a times gamma minus a. Now we'll put those values of alpha, beta, gamma here. And then again, we'll sort of collect terms. So just to reiterate, I'm replacing this with the results of this green box over here. So I'll have six alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared. Okay, that's good. And then minus a times alpha plus beta plus gamma. And then finally minus three a. So that's all of this green stuff. Okay, nice. But now let's see, I can simplify this just a little bit before we move on. And how can I simplify that? Well, I've got six times this times the sum of the squares minus three times the sum of the squares. So that'll simplify down to three times the sum of the squares. So that's one simplification that can occur. Then I've got three times the sum of the linear terms minus a times the sum of the linear terms. That'll simplify down to three minus a times alpha plus beta plus gamma. Then finally, I have this minus three a, which I can move to the other side of the equation, leaving us with 
3a plus 3. Okay, so now in order to finish this thing off, we'll take advantage of this stuff right here, which is in this purple box, and this stuff right here, which is in this green, or in this blue box. So let's bring those to the top and we'll do our final calculations. So in the previous board, we forged the following equation involving alpha, beta, gamma, and A. So we've got three times the sum of the squares, plus three minus a times the sum alpha, beta, and gamma equals three a plus three. But then furthermore, using something called Vieta's formula, we realize that alpha plus beta plus gamma was six, and then the sum of these quadratics was equal to our number a. Let's recall our goal is to find this number a. So immediately we can use this first equation to replace this stuff that I'm boxing in yellow with the number six. Okay, so that's good. Now we'd like to somehow use a combination of those two equations to replace this alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared. And in fact, it's not so tricky. So what we'll start by is looking at alpha plus beta plus gamma quantity squared, which we know to be six squared, which is 36. But now multiplying that out, we'll get alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared plus two times alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma. So again, that's just by multiplying that out. That's not too complicated. But let's notice that this sum of the quadratics is exactly equal to our number a. So this gives us a pretty nice equation that we can use to solve for this sum of the squares. That means we can replace this sum of squares with the following object. We will have 36 minus 2 times a. Okay, nice. So now from here, I'll note that everything in our equation has a multiple of three attached. Here we have three, here we have three times two, and here we have three times a plus one. So we'll divide this entire equation by three just to simplify it a little bit. That's gonna leave us with 36 minus two a, plus, now we'll have three minus a times three after dividing, that will give us six minus two a, and then over here on the right hand side we'll have a plus one. Now we'll collect all our a's on one side of the equation and everything else on the other side of the equation, that'll give us five a equals 41, which means we've got our value for a. It's this nice rational number 41 over five. Okay, good. So that's the value of a that makes this action happen. Maybe as a follow-up question, what would these roots alpha, beta, and gamma be for this value of a? I will say that they are complex numbers, so it's not really a simple calculation. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.